Hi and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a pendant utilising 1mm gauge wire and 0.4mm gauge wire. These are your kind of desert island gauges I think. You can obviously size that down or up as appropriate. The bead we're going to use is a flat coin bead. I have this in an enhanced agate so it's been colour treated but you can still see that lovely banding within and that is a drilled flat bead. It's slightly domed on both sides but you could use a, a completely flat coin bead if you prefer. The uh, real necessity with this particular um, design is that you need to have a drill hole within. So I'm going to be using, as I say, one millimetre gauge wire. So you need to make sure that your bead has an aperture that's large enough for the wire that you're planning to use. So this is the piece that we're looking to create today. It's a nice design, very, very simple, suitable for beginners, um, but it also can look quite striking. Now, I've actually captured this one in position, but if you wanted to, you can leave that free moving and take the coil and pop it up over the front if you prefer, and then you can have something that is spinnable. But for uh, today's demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to capture that so it's slightly mobile but still doesn't move around too much. So your ingredients listing are 30 inches of 1mm gauge wire and two lengths, also around about the 30 inches, probably not quite that long, um, of your 0.4mm gauge wire as well. So today I'm working in antique bronze and raw copper, antique bronze in 1mm and raw copper in the 0.4mm gauge. And the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to capture the, uh, the main basics of using a drilled bead in this fashion. So I've got 30 inches or so of the 1mm gauge wire here and I'm just going to open that out and find the approximate halfway point. And at that halfway point what I'm going to do is put a right angle bend in there. It doesn't really matter how you grab hold of that, as long as you get a reasonably sharp, just about right angle bend. And if we assume that this is our upright, I'm going to add the bead onto that and slide it down to where that bend takes place. Like so. So what you can do what you can do at this stage if you would like to is choose the face that you want to see visible for the most part. Um, what will happen is that you will capture the face uh, that you're choosing at this point in the pendant and that will be the one that you wear forwards for the most part. It is a reversible design if you want it to be, it's entirely up to you. So coming back down to the board, the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that the wire that's coming away to one side at the bottom, I've chosen to take that left, it doesn't really matter, but what we want to do is to warm this wire through slightly, I'm going to tilt this sideways and then create a curve. Now I'm going to allow the wire to do that work for me. We want to curve all the way around the one side of your bead. Now, if you did want this to be a bit more mobile, ensuring that you've got just a little bit of space there is, is quite smart. It makes life just a little bit easier during the latter stages of the design. You don't want it to be too tight, otherwise you won't be able to achieve the weaving look down one side. So once you're happy with the swoop of wire coming around one side, we're going to wrap that a couple of times around the upright, the neck of the design, just to lock that into position. So again, at this stage, ensuring you have a little bit of spare space between the bead and the swoop of wire. We're going to start taking that around like so. I'm going to go for a couple of turns and what you'll see is that that tightens up the wire at the side. So at this stage you can open that back out by just reversing ever so slightly so that you do have just a little bit of space there to play with. Bring your swoop of wire back to the front and then give that a bit of a, 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 bit of a squish, a very, very gentle squish, just to make it tame and to have it sitting where you want it to sit. So make sure that you do have just a little bit of space down the side. And then what we're going to do is turn the upright and the sideways into a V formation coming away at the top. So I'm going to start by gripping that upright and turning it ever so slightly out, moving my pliers to about five millimeters above where I've just created that line. Whoops. And then turning gently so that it comes back to an upright. The wire that was coming off at 90 degrees in one direction, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. So it's coming up at an angle and then about five, four or five millimetres above, I'm going to draw that over. It doesn't have to be too sharp a bend, but we just need to have 
that kind of tram line going on now. You could at this stage just squish those wires down to give them a little bit of extra rigidity. What this will achieve for you is just to make it slightly easier for the next section of the demonstration, which is just to put a little bit of detail on what will become the bale of our pendant design. So I'm just going to do a four and four back and forth design basket weave figure of eight, however you prefer to know it. And to do this, I'm going to start by winding on four times around one side with my 0.4 millimeter gauge wire. So you could work off the reel for this segment because we're not quite sure how much we're going to want to use but I have got a cut section of around about 30 inches so I'm going to start by winding that around I've got a good couple of turns in one direction and then to be thrifty we're going to take that tail all the way around and then just pop back in with the pliers to get that all used up and to have it sitting close around the wire as possible. Now it's only gone around three times, so you could in fact do a three and three, or you could add another swoop, whichever is your preference. I think in the demonstration piece I've gone for four and four, so I'll show you how to do that. So just grip onto that and bring the wire around again, like so. And then we've come down the centre here. So what we need to do is come up and around the other side so that's one and whoops over the top two and three and four down the center bring those so that they are like tram lines up the other side and around now instead of being incredibly boring and watching me do that over and over again I am going to pull a, a bit of a here's one I made earlier so here's one I made earlier I'm just going to switch this one out like so. So you can see what I've done is a back and forth weave all the way up and this is about an inch and three quarters, an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters and what that enables me to do is have enough space to bring in a set of pliers. Now I'm coming up from that the uh, windy roundy bit at the top at the neck there, I'm coming up about six or seven millimetres and I'm going to put a forward bend in like so. And you can see that that's coming at approximately 90 degrees forwards from the design that we chose to look at. Now, I'm just going to make sure that I've got the face I want. I think I want this face to appear forward. So this is the way that I'm going to hold the design when I start wrapping further on and on. So to create the bale, you can use a pencil or you can use a roller. Or you can indeed use your bale makers, which is basically what they're designed for. So I'm going to go for the middle size and see how that looks. And just gently start that rolling around. Flip that over and you can see that I've gone for a, a, a kind of a curve at the front and a flat back. That means that when you wear the design it will sit flat against the body and you won't have to worry about it being uncomfortable. You can, if you prefer, straighten that up and have that centralised in a more traditional design. It is entirely up to you. For this design I think I'm going to have it so that there's a dome on the front and a flat section on the back. So the next thing I'm going to need to do, I'm just going to flip this over so that we're looking at the back and I'm going to separate out these wires. Now, this um, antique bronze is lovely and soft, so I'm just going to use my th uh, thumb and fingernail to just open those out. You could, if you prefer, use a set of pliers just to get that to sit exactly how you want it to. Now I'm just going to pick whichever one of these wires is um, appropriate for you, whichever one is easiest, whichever one is longer perhaps, and I'm going to draw that around the neck a couple of times until that meets back down at the base. So that's one, that's two, that's enough. So I'm going to flip this over and allow you to see what that looks like from the front. Like so. So we've wrapped twice around with the one wire, and we're going to utilise that to create an extra banded area and again I'm just going to warm the wire through gently and then allow the wires strength to create that crescent type effect as it swoops down to meet at the bottom of the bead like so. So you can take a little bit of extra time just to make that flat. You could even if you wanted to utilize some flat pliers once you're happy with the shape and just give it a little bit of extra strength and rigidity. Now, the reason we would uh, use cut wire rather than on the reel for this next section is that we need to wind on to the outer wire first. What I am going to do is just very, very briefly warm the tail from the side that we're not working with. 
and I'm warming it just so that I can curl that out of the way because otherwise it's going to catch on things around you such as dogs, cats and small children. So I'm always trying to think of ways to just make life that little bit easier um, and make the demonstrations more real life. It's all very well to think that we have a workbench and we have loads of space, but we don't generally speak in. We're working on a kitchen table or a section of garage or maybe just a little bit of space on the sofa with people around you. So if you can prevent yourself from uh, getting caught up in Nana's knitting or whatever's going on near to you, then it's probably wise to try and do that if you can. So coming back down to the board minor technical hitch the video camera stopped videoing literally what it's supposed to do and it just went nah anyway continuing what i was saying i'm going to take the outer wire of our two arcs and i'm going to wind on some 0.4 millimeter gauge to that outer wire and i'm going to go for around about seven coils which i will then choose to repeat throughout the design as a pattern so I have a good couple of feet, maybe two feet of 0.4 millimetre gauge wire. And I'm just going to pop down to the end of the wire to make my life easy. This is the outer of the swoops and I'm just going to wind around a couple of times. It can be a little bit loose at this stage if you want it to be. And once I've got those seven turns around, I'm going to bring that all the way down to closer to the design and then I'm just going to check my numbers and make sure I've got exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take that end and just tuck it away neatly like so and then I think I need to add another couple of coils to make that up to the seven that's seven and I'm then just going to tuck the tail away like so you'll see that I've coiled this out of the way just to make life easier so seven coils around the outer of the two arcs and the wire is coming over the top and down now that means I just need to lift my bead out of the way draw the tail of the wire up inside where the bead sits so I've gone over the top that means I'm coming up and around the inner of my two arcs so to begin with I'm just passing it through I'm not making any definitive bends until I get right close down to the end near the neck of the design and I can continue to wind that around. So I'm going to go once and twice. This is the second one. And then a third time, like so. Taking the tail away in case it's getting on your nerves. And then just pushing that so they're nice and tightly coiled together. You can also do this with your pliers. Just be careful of your gemstone. Hold that out of the way. And just make sure that that's nice and neat and you're happy with it. So you would continue to do the same kind of pattern until you get that form that you're looking for. So I'm just going to reform little by little as I go. So seven on the outside, swoop, three on the inside. You can alternate that as and how you desire to make it your personal design. But we're looking for a nice little swoop to create that crescent-like effect. So supporting the design like so, we can then push around that extra seven times. So what I'm going to do here is just get almost to the end of this segment of the demo because it is just repetition three times around the inner, seven times around the outer and continue until everything comes together at the bottom and I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. So I've just completed a little bit of segment around the edge, that crescent shape with seven on the outside and three on the inside. And coming back to the board, you can see I've finished with three on the inside, very close to that little right angle bend we made. And you can tighten those up with the pliers if you wish to, to make that look as tidy as possible. Now to stop the bead from spinning, um, what we're going to do is put a little bit of detail over the front, such as this little Basenji tail just here. If you want it to be completely free spinning, you could simply truncate your design here and put a tiny little coil going in a downwards motion and then it could act a little bit like a fob, I guess. Uh, but what I'm going to do is show you how to create that little tail design up here. So my wire has come over the top of the inner wire down between the two tram lines and I'm now going to just wind around several times to create uh, a covered, almost gizmode-like effect. Now obviously this is quite boring to watch, uh, so I'm just going to do a couple of turns and show you how every sort of five or six loops of the wire you can give that a bit of a scooch up to give you a really almost machined effect to the design so if you were to continue all the way along you'd get a lovely uh, design effect it would be like a gizmo or a machined piece but I'm just going to cut that away there now and just again tidying away that end 
and then I'm going to decide how large a coil I want. So I'm probably going to go for about this much, which is about two inches. Trim the tail away. These bits of wire are always useful. Don't discard them. Just hold on to them for later use. I'm going to give that a bit of a squash to make it nice and tidy. And then pop in with the round nose pliers. Just supporting the design as you go. And start by coiling inwards. Like so. Once you get... At least one and a bit turns around that coil you can start moving thus if you do have the coiling all the way along you can very delicately hold this to get it to go uh, until you start moving around the coiled section and then you can coil by hand if you prefer I tend to just use a gentle touch with the pliers and then you don't affect the surface of that coiled section overly it can give it quite a nice flattened design. So I'm just going to draw that up and over and this will stop the bead from spinning overly much. Now if you want to add some further detail, you've got this spare wire at the top here. Now I chose with this sample design to continue wrapping in the opposite direction as our first neck wire. So I did that about three or four times and that just enhances the strength of the piece. And at this stage you could shorten the design to around about an inch and a half and then coil upwards to cover the neck. And in fact, I think that's what I will show you how to do next. But as an alternative, you can bring the wire round to the rear, trim it to about three inches and put a coil on the back as I have done here which stops the bead from moving. But if that is not your preference, then we're going to trim away the wire now. And I'm going to pop on a coil at the top to cover the coiling around the neck. So these are very, very popular in wire work, especially at the uh, beginner's stages as we're looking to follow in this YouTube channel. We're looking to kind of enable brand new people to work with wire work and also people to work on their existing skills. So I'm just going to draw the coil so that it sits up and over. Now I'm just going to pop that down so that it covers most of that neck. So you've got a couple of different ideas that you can work with. Both of these are utilising the same kind of technique. They're just finished in slightly different ways. Now, there is an element of movement to this one, not a huge amount. There's an element of movement to this one, again, not a huge amount. Both made using basically the same idea, but finishing up looking just a little bit different. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's techniques, and I hope that you will continue to pop by every now and again. Until then, stay safe. And have a lovely day. Bye for now.